going to go to the test management. So it's basically how tests can be managed. And I said, there are a lot of things that goes into testing that uh, as a professional tester, you need to consider. And also, you're going to be reporting to a test manager if you are one, if you are not a test manager, or if you're a test manager also, you have responsibility that you need to uh, do. You have some tasks that you need to do. And also, if you are a test analyst also, there are some tasks that you need to also do as a tester. So, and this is what we're going to focus on in this particular session uh, of the training. So, so as a test manager, you are meant to do the test planning, so and also test control. So basically, you, based on your experience in testing, so you and also in quality management and also project management, you kind of do resource planning and everything. So, uh, your responsibility of the responsibility of a test manager would be writing and coordinating the test policy and also developing the test approach and also you will be the eyes of the testers also representing them and also putting test perspective into the project so and also it's going to be include hiring of new testers and also procuring of testing resources or tools and everything. So, and you're going to be introducing and also selecting the right and also suitable test strategy. So, yeah, so as I said, as a test manager, you would be selecting right strategy and right method for your team. And also, you're also going to be selecting the right two also. I know there's a concept of um, test architect also that does this also, but in some cases, you will follow on the lap of the test manager to be able to select the right tools and also to organize those tools and also provide training for the test team. And also, in most cases also, you might also need to coordinate the test environment as a test manager. Your test manager might also coordinate or also decide on the test environment that we need to use and also the automation test too. So also, it also involves introducing an optimizing supporting process. I also, also you might also need to introduce on uh, different metrics so to define the test to, um, test plan. So we're going to talk about test plan in, in a moment also. So you need to evaluate the metrics that you need to use also. Uh, I've seen some uh, some people work in a situation whereby um, they see oh, the resource um, that the hired has to um, write 10 test cases in a day, five test cases in a day, or how many box. To be honest, that, I, I don't think that's a good way to measure performance. So, but we're going to look into that later, to be honest, so if time permits. So, but you need to have the right way to evaluate, evaluate or evaluating your metrics. So, and the right way and also to measure performance of the resource that you have. So, and also you need to know how to measure test results, test prog progress also. So more often than not, might not be based on number of bugs that a tester has raised or how number of um, test plan they've written. But in this, you'll be with that to adapt the right test plan and also on test results and progress of of the test. So, and as a test manager, also you need to have a way or a suitable metric for measuring progress, as I said, and also evaluating the quali quality of testing. This is where I really want to evaluate or emphasize actually that evaluating quality of the testing sometimes is another issue for test managers. Sometimes most of them don't know how to evaluate it. So they evaluate based on 
uh, numerical um, numbers that how many test cases have you written, how many um, bugs have you raised, which I think is not the right way to do it, to be honest. So, because some someone can write high level uh, test cases, another person can go into low level. So, for everyone so we need to know that and also as a test manager you also would be communicating the reports you need to be doing a report of your testing and to the stakeholders so okay now coming to test analyst so what are the responsibility of a test analyst so so basically in notch you are going to be doing the testing <laughs> you are going to be doing the testing the first thing that you need to do is reviewing the requirements and we've said right now that we have three different approaches so based on what we have so if you are going to be using a specification based approach if you are going to be using a structural based approach which is not technically for a test analyst or it basically will be useful for a developer but you might also want to be want to use experience based if there's no requirements so but if there's requirements you need to review that requirement first actually so that means as a new tester if you want to start testing what do you need to start from maybe that's one question that someone asks so you need to ask the requirement where is the requirement why am i testing so there should be a document that is being written whether it's in written in Gekin or is written in bdd is been written in a format that business can understand there should be a requirement that you would be based your test should be based on so but it, that is if you are going to be using specification based if there's no requirement then what they're expecting you to use is experience based so maybe for a new tester so that kind of role might not be for you to be honest because if there's no requirement you might struggle so you may need to base your um, testing on experience so if you find yourself in that situation what will you do you need to talk to people that's got experience in that particular application or in the, in testing the similar application to be able to guide you to so that you can be able to perform then having reviewed the requirements also you need to design your test cases so we've just um, gone through uh, test techniques so in design your test cases you need to go through the techniques again to say how do you bring your test data out and what are the steps for you to do that so you need to go back to the uh, text techniques test techniques that we've um, just gone through so then you need to write your uh, test specifications so someone sent a mail to me this afternoon and said oh they, they asked me to write test scenario what is a test scenario so and I said <laughs> it's basically like your into at your steps your scenario in the steps what are you going to test what steps do you need to pass through just to make it in a layman way actually so to say because sometimes you you we have different way of calling this thing sometimes it's even confusing we don't even know which one is the right way so people talk about test conditions which is basically I would say that's the right way to call it test conditions which is like your feature that you want to test and also they also mention about test script which is basically how you want to test the particular test condition so and also test specification so which is the steps also to make sure you test those applications and they call it maybe test scenarios and everything so uh, sometimes just google it out google it out and know where exactly the person is talking about so and then also while doing that also you need to prepare and also create your test data so and I say where you are designing your test cases of course your test data is part of what you need to be preparing or creating so that's another thing so and for automation also of course 
I, like I said, we're going to do automation as part of this training. So I, like someone asked if program experience is required when I was in the introduction. And I said, yes, if you have a program experience, it makes it to be far, far better than the others that we are not. So, but you could also learn it also. You could learn programming also. And also, if you don't have programming experience, I'll try as much as possible to go and make it as simple as possible so that you can be able to pick up some, uh, the um, automation um, training. But I do encourage you to read about C Sharp, know how to program in C Sharp. It will go a long way for you. So, so also as an automation tester, you are meant to automate, you are meant to uh, know different tools. I would advise you also to look into different tools that they are going to be using because in this particular training uh, for automation, we're going to be using C Sharp, C -sharp and Specflow. But that is not the only tools that is in the market. So after this also, you also need to go out there and also look at different other tools that are not going to be considered in this particular training. So also, you might also be involved in installing and operating the test environment, so which is also another thing that you might need to do. So, and also, also you need to set that environment up. Sometimes you might have to support people in setting that up. So it's also another thing that in other roles that you might enter, this would already been set up for you. You don't need to do anything. You just go in there and start using it. But you might also find yourself in a situation whereby there's nothing at all. So no test environment for you to use. But it's not going to be a big issue for you, to be honest. Setting up a test environment is not that big. Your test environment could be as easy as your, the laptop that they gave to you to use. So, and that's it. It might be also be more difficult that you have to create your website yourself, you have to deploy database yourself, you have to make sure that even log into Azure, and it might be as difficult as that, but it might also be as easy as just get a laptop, the website is there, and there you go. So that also is something that you need to consider. So uh, as time goes on also, you would be reviewing your test plan, test cases, the one that you written before, and also using different tools, you need to measure um, the your performance also. You need to log in your test, and also you need to also document results. I think last time I spoke about how to document your bugs, also what you put in your box. So I said if you are testing an application, and where you are testing an application, you found a bug, what do you do? You create, uh, I think, on the last Tuesday, you, they actually went through, if you missed that class, I think, when I post the video, so be, to, to watch that video, is about the practical part of um, working through your work item and also raising bug. I know, I think, Timmy also, uh, run through how you can create your box. So when you create your box, you put your description of the box in there. You put, you can put the severity, you can put the priority of that particular box, and you could the description step to create that particular box. If there's any screenshot or any error message that you've seen, you put that in. Any information that you think that you have and could be useful, you put them there also. And if there's any log from anywhere, you put them there. So, so those are very, very important. So, so that the step can be easily recreated. So, so you you need to to do that. So that is that for test analysis also. So, and you also have overall approach to strategy of the of testing. So, and this is thing that I said for a tester, if you join an establishment today, the first thing you need to ask for is their test strategy, if there's any. So, and if there's none, like I said, you need to start putting one together. So, it's very, very important for a test, uh, a QA team to have a test strategy, because it's kind of the Bible for, for the 
for the team. So, and I've mentioned about test environment before, you need to decide on the test environment and also you need to define different level of testing that needs to be done. Because one, this is very, also very, very important. I think someone might ask the question that, uh, so in when you are writing your tests, actually, even during your test, this is this particular part in terms of test level would be in your test strategy. You need to know what the test strategy you are following. So which test level that you want to concentrate upon. So what I have to say, am I going to be doing unit testing? Or is it developer that are going to be using testing? Are we going to be doing system testing? Uh, are we going to be doing integration testing? So we need to, you need to know which test level you are focusing upon, actually. So that is very, very important. And also, which testing activities that you've been employed to do. Are you a manner tester? Are you an automated tester? Are you a performance tester? Are you all together going to be doing the same thing? So this is very, very important to actually and get that information even from your te from your line manager to s so that you know what you've been employed to do really so also you need to know a way to evaluate your results your test results to see if it meets the requirement and also one thing i want to also say also maybe i'm, I'm not sure is on this slide it's you need to know, define your test exit criteria. What is your test exit criteria? When do you say, when can you say I have finished testing? And we know that from previous one that you cannot exhaustively test your application. But when can you say enough is enough? When can you stop testing? So those are the things that goes into the test strategy to say so a good example would mean that oh when there's no money yeah you can stop testing of course that is the easy one but when can you stop testing when can you stop testing that is what you specify in your exit criteria so it could be as simple as when you cover all your test cases when you cover all your specification or when all the bugs has been fixed when there's no high priority box or something like that or yeah those list has to be explicitly uh, explicitly stated in your test strategy so then so also how much documentation is required and it also should be prepared so you need to also know that so when you are um, starting a job you need to know what documentation is required for you to prepare so and also writing test plan so who does that? Who write it when and how much of it? So you need to you need to know that. So more often than not, I think writing test plan is the role of a test manager. So and sometimes also a test analyst also who have their own input into that. So okay. No. Uh, also, you need to estimate test effort and test cost. So uh, I think in the first lesson I mentioned about uh, grooming in Agile. So which another thing. So during the grooming session, you might be required to estimate your effort, your test effort to see uh, how many hours or time or in some cases when people are using point, what is the point for your testing. So you may also be required to do that. So one of the you know, techniques that people do often use to estimate test effort is to say that let's assume let's assume you are um, writing a test cases for a requirement of maybe five lines. So you now look at okay for the five lines, how, how many hours is it going to take me to do one line? If it's going to take you to do um, five hours for for a line, so then you can as well just multiply it by five times five, 25, 25 hours. That's the easiest approach to use. The same way also for even um, for testing also. You've created your test plan, you've created your test plan, everything is there, so and you're about to execute it. If, you're, if a test plan 
or a scenario is taking you like two hours to test so you could as well estimate it is actually like a guesstimate anyway to say one requirement is taking me two hours and I've got 10 requirements to test so it's going to be two times 10 so which is basically like 20 hours so you can actually uh, use that approach so so that is that for the test management we're going to look into test planning right now so so we're going to look at test planning now so so uh, like I said initially I said everyone I mentioned everyone can do testing but this is what separates everyone from testing so in normal other people that do testing they don't do planning you don't sit down and say so for instance if you buy a new uh, iPhone you would do user acceptance testing technically that's what is, is called user acceptance testing because you look at the uh, um, the phone and you want to confirm that it meets your requirements so you would do user acceptance testing but you will not go and start to write a test cases out you will not sit down and say oh okay now what am I looking for in this um, application or in this particular phone so you won't you won't start doing that you have your requirements on in your head and you start to, to do your testing but if you are doing testing professionally is totally different you need to do planning you need to do preparation so and this preparation and planning start as early as possible in development life cycle so and also uh, we need we will look into what goes into a test plan right now so to see so let's look into that so according to this particular IE document so it's kind of a old one so I'll see um, there should be a new version but according to this so what do you need to put into your test plan so a test plan should have your test plan identifier which is basically a number that you have to put into your test plan so to see this test plan for 001 or something like that and you're going to put a brief introduction of about the test plan so you're going to say oh, what that test plan is all about and put a quick introduction of that you could just google out a sample test plan to see how it looks like and I said in some cases you might have a test manager that will do that for you or you could also need to do that for you for every project but of course you will have a test um, strategy already created if not you might also need to do that so for a test plan so I said you you have the test plan identifier you have the introduction and also test items so you list all the items that you have to be tested so then the next one which I think is one of the most um, important parts of the test plan so is you add your features to be tested what are the features that you want to test so you list all the features that you want to to test so I want to test the login I want to test the registration I want to test so every feature that you should be considered as part of the test plan so and also you have your feature not to be tested so this is kind of like uh, um, what are the features that you want to exclude from this testing so for instance we can say oh we don't want to do um, closing of accounts at this particular time because we don't have account to close so then therefore we're going to exclude that particular feature in in our testing or because this particular functionality is not ready it's not yet developed or it's not going to be developed or the entry criteria is not yet met for this particular feature so you're going to remove that so also what are your approach to testing what are different things that you want to test so then also you want to also list your item pass or a criteria so I mentioned this before so if you want what are the criteria to establish an item field or as passed 
So also, what basically, what is your exit criteria? How can you say this test has passed or has failed? So you want to be able to put that down. Another part you put in your test plan is suspension criteria and resumption um, requirements. So this is like when you are testing, you might be in a situation whereby you start your testing. When you start your testing and the test fails, so uh, you want to suspend a test. Uh, so let's say you want to say the test is blocked, so to say. So what are the criteria that you want to use to determine that a test is blocked? It could be as simple as saying that, oh, that particular functionality is no longer available, or that test cannot be executed because there are other tests that is blocking it, or there's a bug in that particular application. So then what is your resumption criteria? For instance, if there's a bug for that particular test, then the assumption requirement could be that the bugs already been fixed, or the developer is not around to fix it. Then, when the developer is around, then you can continue. Uh, so, you need to put those suspension criteria and resumption requirements in this particular session of the test plan. Then, also, test deliverables. What are different deliverables that you want to? Uh, submit or you want to deliver to the stakeholders so you like of course there will be you need to list those on deliverables here so maybe your test cases your test conditions your test report your box that you list and you found and different document that you pre prepared your screenshot your um, to show that the test pass or fails so if you are also doing automation script also your automation script that you've done so everything that you would be um, expected to deliver has to be written at this particular uh, section of your test plan so and also your testing task what are the things that you need to do what are the tasks or uh, uh, activities that um, you have to perform. Environmental needs, like I mentioned about this before, so if you are meant to set up environment, which environment is, so how do you set it up, what do you need, which resource do you need, which requirement do you need, so these are going to be listed there. And also responsibility, who does what and when, so what is your own responsibility, uh, like or you have, at this point you need to mention people and say oh no, the developer is the one that is doing this the QA is doing this performance tester is doing that so or uh, all the, uh, and also even the um, test manager also is responsible for this so your requirements and your responsibilities are listed at this particular sessions so then staffing and training needs so. What are the staff that we need and what are their capabilities and what they need to do and what training do they require. So those also goes into this section. So schedule was the plan. How do we need to deliver it? When is it going to be delivered? So that also comes into that into this section. So then risks and contingencies. So this so is also very, very, also very important. So, uh, so in terms of the risks and contingencies, so what it, these are also very very important parts. So in terms of risks attributed to that particular uh, application, and also uh, which type of risk-based testing you are doing, and also what are the project risks, product risks attributed to that particular uh, project, and also what are the contingencies. So in case uh, uh, there's any risks that will happen, how do we mitigate those particular risks that's attributed to that project? So, and the last part is approvals. So, you need to send the approvals to um, whoever needs to approve that test plan. Maybe your test manager has to approve, uh, the delivery manager or, and also development manager has to approve so that everyone 
buys into this particular test plan so that this is what we call for this particular project this is our test plan and this is this is it so this is what we're going to go through and this is what we're going to test so everyone has to be on board on this particular one 